beautiful, beautiful view. This is uh, the penthouse, one of the <laughs> penthouses of Seton Hall. I'm with Sh associate head coach Shaheen Holloway. Uh, Wu here. Um, long summer, enjoyable summer for you? It's, it's been good, it's been interesting. Um, long summer on the recruiting trail. Yeah. Uh, missed out on some big time recruits that we uh, been recruiting since ninth grade. Yeah. Right now. It's part of the process, but it's been, it's been a long summer, but productive. Everybody started off undefeated, so it's still okay, you know. Well, that's well, that, that's the best part of summer. Yeah. Everybody's undefeated, and it's a good time for us to just spend time with our players and get them better, and you know, make sure everybody's on the right track to graduate in summer school. So it's it's a good time. I want to ask I, before we even get back into college and recruiting and everything. Um, want to talk about your career? You mm -hmm. know how uh, young guy from Queens. Uh, came to Seton Hall and um, you the went journey. to play at yeah the journey the <laughs> journey the, the, the voyage yeah, yeah. Um, the 600 miles of walking yeah. uh, what was the story of you from Queens and then going to St. Pat's well I um, the summer before my freshman year I was coming out to Jersey playing um, some tournaments yeah and the coach from Jersey at the time, at the St. Pat's, was Kevin Boyle. Um, he was actually playing against a couple of their guys on their team, and my aunt stayed out here. And uh, so, you know, coming out here playing, talking with him, and he tried to get me to come to St. Pat's, and we talking. And I really didn't want to do it. Um, really didn't want to leave New York. Never really left New York that much. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it was kind of a process. Talking to a lot of, you know, older players in New York, Kenny Anderson, Dave Edwards, you know, guys, Dave is really, I'm really close with Dave. And Dave was like, you know, just go out there. You know, give it a chance, you know. And, um, you know, I, I never really left home. I really didn't want to do it. I was like, you know what, it's, it's different. Nobody, I never heard anybody doing it. And I'm the type of person that want to do something first all the time. So I was the first, you know, one, one of the first to come from New York to Jersey and start a trend. And it worked out great. If you didn't go to St. Pat's, where were some of the schools? Well, obviously the local school, Jamaica, Forest Hills, um, Bishop Rockland, or McClancy. Okay. Yeah. McClancy's by my house. Yeah, so the funny, um, Artie Cox, who was now at Christ the King. Yeah. He was at McClancy. And that he was, was the head coach. And that was my AU coach. Okay. At the time, so. Oh, wow. I didn't yeah. know he was at McClancy. Yeah, so it was oh. funny. I, I think that been right. Were they like powerhouses, those schools you mentioned? Well, oh. McClancy was really good back then. He was one of the powerhouses. Um, Bishop Lockman always been really, really good. Jamaica was a good public school. Yeah. Forest Hills was, you know, was coming up on the rise. Uh, it's funny. Forest Hills had kids from Left Rack. All the kids from Left Rack. Yeah. So it's funny because the assistant coach at uh, Minnesota right now, Kamani Young. Yes. He was at Forest, uh, Forest Hills, and him and I played AU together with AMI. So it was. That so was he went right to there. Forest Hills. Yeah. Oh so my God. Funny. So yeah. he would have been. He's. He, you guys are both older than me, so. Yeah. He, he was like a year or two older than me. Yeah. Okay, wow. Yeah, that's what's I funny. probably could have ran into him yeah, in school, right, if I went that. there. <laughs> or you would have been there, too. How about that? Yeah, so it's, oh, it's, you know, it's, a, it's a small world. This basketball thing is really small. And you picked Seton Hall. Yep. Was there any other schools on your list? Yeah, so, you know, coming out of, I was very fortunate um, coming out of high school. I, I could have went to any school I won. Yeah. Um, McDonald's All-American. You know, I got Absolutely. MVP in the McDonald's game. One of the best McDonald's game, I might say. You know, Kobe Bryant you know, was in that game. And I say Kobe because, you know, behind Michael Jordan, to me, he's the second best player. I know everybody liked LeBron, but, yeah. you know, Kobe was an you know, unbelievable player, an unbelievable competitor. But um, coming out, you know, I, I know my top five down, one of the five visits, it was uh, Syracuse, Duke, Kentucky, University of Kyle, Seton Hall. And I kind of had... Kansas in there in the background a little bit, but I know, I know I didn't want to go too far away from home. So it's funny because my list is all over the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, you know, those were the, those was my five visits I went on. Okay. And it came down to Duke, Kyle, and Seton Hall. And the reason why I chose Kyle was at the time, Coach Bolton was there, and Jason Kidd had just was the point guard, and yeah, he was made a big splash, and you know, there was a team that was hot at the time, and. You know, and I really like what Coach Bowles was 
selling at the time. You know, Sharif Abdul Rahim and I became really good friends. And he was there as a freshman. And he also told me he wasn't going to stay too long. So that was kind of you know, in my decision why I didn't go there. <laughs> Plus, it was really far away from home. It was yeah. really far away from home. But I wanted to go check it out. Um, I had a daughter in high school. So I know that I wanted to be close to her. Okay. And then, you know, between, you know, it was really, really hard to turn down Duke. But it really wasn't because when I came to see all my visits, I just kind of fell in love with the school. Yeah. The people here, um, you know, it, it was more than basketball at the time. You know, Coach Blaney at the time was a coach. I loved him. He did an unbelievable job of recruiting me, him and. Brian's dad. Yeah, Brian. Yeah, And, and also, you know, Greg Arenda who was a coach at FDU. He's the guy who recruited me. And they did an unbelievable job of recruiting me and made me feel very comfortable. And I'm a person, I'm about, if, if I'm comfortable with you, then I'm good with you. And they made me feel very comfortable. And um, at the time, um, Lavelle Sanders, who was from Brooklyn, I don't know how he went to Jamaica, but he, he was from Brooklyn but went to Jamaica High School. Every day. At the time. Oh my God, I feel his and, pain. <laughs> and he was, um, he was here. And him and I knew each other for a while and I wanted to play with him. So that's kind of one of the reasons why I came to see him. Wow. That so that that was really what it came down to. You know, it came down to a few things. It came down to like like I said earlier, I'm I'm a trendsetter. I mm -hmm. want to do things my way. Yeah. I'm not a follow I'm not following anyone. Yeah. I want to start something. So, you know, I went to St. Pat's. People knew about St. Pat's but nobody really knew about it. But when I when I left it was a powerhouse. Everybody wanted wanted to go there. So I wanted to do the same thing at Seton Hall. I wanted to come here and Seton Hall got tremendous history. Tremendous history. But at the time it was down a little bit. So I wanted to come here, get it started. You know, Tim Thomas was supposed to come with me at the time. Him and I was that. supposed to make a splash, and then, you know, he ended up going to Villanova. But, you know, um, it took some time, and then my senior year, we, we did really good, made the Sweet 16, and I broke my ankle, then, you know, the rest of the season. Was, was that the one, um, was Ty Shine on the team with you? Yeah, Ty was a sophomore when I, when I was a senior. And when I broke my ankle in a tournament. You were out of, the ga you were out of yeah, one of the game, he, right? Yeah, he, he had a really he, big game against Temple. Yeah. Yeah, and then the class afterwards, you graduated. Then the big yeah, Andre class. and Eddie came in. Yep. Yeah. So they got it going. Yeah. I remember that. I remember that yeah. season. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, that was crazy. Um, then you went overseas, somewhat. Yeah. yeah. I was over there for seven years, eight years. Yeah. How was that? It was a great experience. Um, I kind of, if I had to do it all over again, I would have experienced more. I wasn't really a a guy that like to do, you know, tourist things and, and sightseeing and all that type of stuff. That's that's not my thing back then. Yeah. So I was young, you know. Now that I'm older, I appreciate it more. Yeah. Um, but I had a great time playing in some great countries. Um, had a really good career over there. So, you know, I have I don't have anything to be ashamed of. Did you? Oh yeah, I know. Well, pff, you, yeah, nothing, man. I mean, McDonald's All American. You know, Seton Hall. Yeah, no, nah, I mean, but, you know, it. it, it it's funny because, you know, when you, you talk to certain people and people ask questions, like even like me being a coach right now, I never talk about myself to recruits. You know, I always, you know, talk about the program and what we're selling and things like that. I never really talk about what I did as a player. Yeah. But people who know me do have some type of influence on those kids. They say, oh, he was this, he was that, you know, this and that. And people say, well, what happened? I just say, you know, it's unfortunate, you know. Something bad happened, but something good happened too. Yeah, for me, I saw you on TV. Yeah. So. But I, not even that, but see, it, it's like. That's why I always want to like, oh, talk to you. But you know, the, the, the funny thing was like, I was the first one in my family to graduate from college, so I set a trend. Now, that's a standard in my family. Now everybody wants to go to college and graduate. My daughter just graduated from Seton Hall, so you know what I mean. So those are the things. Like, if I never got hurt and broke my ankle and was out a year and a half. I probably would never graduate. I would have left just like anybody else. Yeah. You know, and but obviously, you know, the ultimate goal was the NBA, and I was right there, and you know, and I had a cup of coffee, and I, you know, you know summer leagues, and you know, at four veteran camps. But you know, I chose to go overseas and play because I wasn't chasing the dream anymore. Yeah. I was. I wanted to play. I wanted to, you know, finish doing what I was doing. And I know that you know eventually I wanted to coach. Right. So you felt. When did you feel the coaching? Like, all right, this is my next move. Well, it kind of came on early. Um, I was playing in Germany, and um, my daughter was in middle school, and she was having some troubles, you know, uh, you know, dealing with some things. And I wanted to bring her overseas with me, but the, the closest American school was like two and a half hours away. Okay. So I had just signed a two-year deal in Germany too. It was funny. This team was very upset at me. 
I just signed a two year deal, and so I called my agent. I was like, listen, um, we, we got to find something. I got to bring my daughter with me. You know, she got to come back over with me. It's my time. She need me. It's my time. I got to be that father in her life. And we, we couldn't find the school close. So what I did was I ended up, you know, um, giving one of the years back to the team, the money back. I said, okay, what's well, so I'm only going to play for one year. And then I took a year off. Had her come live with me. We did uh, like house school, like like homeschool. Then I got in Germany. Back. No, no, actually, I came back to Jersey. Oh, okay, okay, Jersey. okay. Yes, yeah, so I came back to Jersey and we did like homeschool. And then I got, I was like, you know what? I want to get into coaching. And then I started coaching in high school at Bloomfield Tech. Yeah. With uh, Nick Marinaro. And um, at that time, we had, you know, Rashawn Dwight and, you know, uh, uh, Kasim Drummond that went to Villanova and you know, Rashawn D had that, that went to West Virginia with Rashawn Dwight and okay. that went to Iona, you know. So it was, you know, Wesley Jenkins that went to FDU, I mean, he went to St. Peter's. So we, you know, we won, we won a state championship that year. And it ended up, you know, something I know I wanted to do, but it happened sooner. All right. So then, boom, you, you just went in. So you were supposed to leave again. Yes. I'm and go. Ahead. So you were supposed to really go back to playing well, overseas. Well, I was still training. So I was in, it's funny, I was coaching in high school, but I was coming up here every day. I had my personal trainer, and then the coach at the time, Louis Owens, let me practice with the team. Right. To stay in shape. So I was still in playing mode. But what ended up happening is my daughter needed my help more than basketball, basketball at the time. So, so I had to make a decision, and obviously for your kids, you make the decision for them every time. Okay. So it kind of happened, you know, it just it happened quick. Like it happened really quick. I went from coaching in high school. Bobby Gonzalez got the job here. He was like, listen, I want you to come on the staff. Came on the staff the first year with Bobby. You were how many how many years were you at Bloomfield before you? One called? year. One year. One year. It wasn't like crazy. It wasn't one year. It was like five man. months. You know, and um, I got the job here, and then you know, Coach Willard got the job at Iona. Boom. And, and I was there, you know, with him. Did so you it, leave it, when it Bobby happened. left? No. Oh, you left during so, when Bobby was still here. So, so Bobby first year here was my first year. Here. Then I left. To go to Iona, he stayed here for three more extra years. Okay. Yeah. So. It, so you, and then you went to Iona. Went to Iona for three years there, and then we came back here. And we got the job here. And you're like, it so you could have been playing overseas, but quick. but not having maybe an un, unknown coaching job, unknown. Well. But now you. Stayed. I knew I wanted to coach, but I didn't know it was gonna happen that quick. I thought I'd be, I thought I would be starting coaching like right now. Like I thought like right now my career would be over. Then I would start coaching like now. I had no idea it was going to start 10 years ago. So, it, it, you know, it's, it's funny how things happen, you know. And um, I'm very grateful and very fortunate that, you know, the coaches at the time, Bobby Gonzalez, gave me opportunity. And then Kevin Willis seen something to me to give me opportunity. And then, you know, we... Um, then you guys moved, packed up bags. And came home. And now I'm home. And now I'm here. And, you know, and, we, Did and, you, and we're making it work. When you went to Iona, you're working there. Did you ever think you would go back to I uh, Seton Hall? So, so that, that's one so, of the things. So it's, it's funny how things happen. It's, it's really <laughs> so, um, my first two months at Iona, Jeff Billet was the assistant coach here, who is now the coach at CBA High School. He left Seton Hall to go back to high school. Bobby called me back and wanted me to come back as a full-time assistant, but I was at Iona for only two months. So I had to, so it was a big decision to go back to your alma mater or stay. And I just felt like, you know, at the time I wanted to stay at Iona just to learn some more things. And, cause I, was, things. I was really young. Yeah. I only been coaching for less than a year. Mm -hmm. You know, so to be at that, to be in the Big East, at that, I wasn't sure I was ready for that at the time. So I wanted to start, you know, at the MAC level, learn some stuff from Coach Willard, learn some stuff. And I thought I could always come back. And just so happened that two years later, three years later, we got the job back here and it's been up, uphill from there. Never even thought you would be back here. Yeah. In this mm -hmm. office. Not this quick. Not that quick. Not at this level at the social head coach. You know, not as someone that's, you know, you know, a big part of the program. I never thought that in, in a long time. So it happened quick and I was happy and I was fortunate and I got my blessings. And What are some of the things that um, you had to really learn on the fly? Well, you know, my first year at Iona, especially at the MAC level, like you have you have to learn. The one thing I had was relationships already. I knew a lot of people. A lot of people knew me, so I knew the relationship part. But you know, you gotta learn how to deal with kids. And 
because I was still in, in player mode. So I'm still thinking like a, like a player sometimes. You know? yeah. So I'm, I, I had to learn how to deal with that because if you anybody who's in, who's in coaching, whether it's high school or AAU or NBA or college, they understand it's more than basketball. Basketball is a very small part of it. You have to learn how to deal with a lot of different things. You got to learn how to deal with personalities. You got to learn how to deal with egos. You got to learn how to deal with you know the kids and their mentors and they you know AAU coaches and just I had to learn how to deal with that. I had to transform myself from being a player, thinking like a player, to becoming a coach. But wasn't it good also to have a kid, also your daughter? Well, you know what, right? at the time, it, you know, it was, you know, she was younger, so she was in middle school, but it was good because she taught me how to have patience. And that's the main thing with coach, you gotta have a lot of patience. So she definitely helped me out, but just, um, you know, dealing with, just learning from a lot of coaches that I played for. Talking to them on the phone getting their perspective about things, asking them questions. Because I'm kind of like a sponge even now. I've been coaching for 12 years, but I'm 13 years, jeez, quick. No, no, I'm like a sponge. I want to know, I want to learn new things. I'm asking questions all the time. I'm picking people's brains. So just had to learn, you know, the ins and outs and, you know, just perfecting my, perfecting my craft. Just trying to, you know, learn new things and, and be the best I could be. And yes, it was very hard on the fly, but I'm a competitor. Yeah. And when you're a competitor and you want to do good and you want to be good, you work hard at it. And that's why I work hard on my job. You get to back you get back to Seton Hall. Obviously Big East changes now. Right? Well um, I, I was there. I was here when it was still the old Big East. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. It, was it was like, like the the crazy. Yeah, it, was the monster, yeah. it was like, oh my god, we gotta play these games again. Oh, unbelievable. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, now the Big East changed a little bit obviously changed for the better. Everybody was like doubting, oh, Big East, we're out of ESPN, we're not, we're not going to be seen in there anymore, and boom, it's being seen, it's getting a lot of coverage, everybody else wants to come into the conference where the venue is, you know, at Barclays the or at, at MSG, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's saying something, like there's value. Well, it's and, a lot of value. Man. Yeah, and with that new title new position, um, you know, from Iona to here, what has been the change for you personally? But it was tough when I first got back, um, you know, just, just dealing with a different type of kid. You know, when you're at Iona, you're dealing with, you know, kids. Maybe it's, if you're lucky, there's probably one kid that can be a pro. Yeah. But at this level, there's everybody thinks they're a pro. Right. And you got to recruit like that. So just, you know, recruiting was different and trying to get things started at first was really tough for us. You know, we had to get our foot in the ground. We had to get kids to believe in us and believe in what we, we was doing. At the time, you know, Seton Hall wasn't winning as much. It's, it's always was a, a great school. The basketball program always been rich in tradition, but at the time it wasn't winning, winning as much. So you have to, you know, had to get kids to buy in and believe in, in you. So that was the hardest part, you know, and we knew that we was going to get it started because we work hard. and We have hard-working staff, and we put a lot of time and effort into it. And just just recruiting that top kid to be the kid to start everything off and then everybody follow behind him. You know, and I, and I thought we had that when I first got here with Kyle Anderson. Right, You know, right. I, thought, I, thought, I thought we had it, and then at the last minute, you know, he decided to go to UCLA. So it, it took us a while to really, you know, get that kid. Yeah. And um, we had some good players, and I thought the class that we brought in, you know, a couple of years ago with, you know, Isaiah and Angel and Kadeem and Ish and Desi and Mike, you know, those guys believed in us and what we were trying to do. And then from there, it's been, you know, you know, we still got some ways to go, but we making a lot of steps in the right direction. And that class helped us. Oh, you know, huge. You no, know, you know, that class helped us. You, know, you get a kid like Isaiah White, who's McDonald's American. Right. You know, get a kid like Andrew Delcado, who's a top 50 player in the country. Kadeem Carrington, who's at the time New York leading scorer in New York, New York history. You know, so getting three guys of that caliber to come in the same year, then getting a guy like Desi and Ish and Mike, they made the, the class strong and they made us sexy. Right. Like it, it was sexy. Now, now now it's sexy to go to Seton Hall. Before it wasn't as sexy. It was harder to get the yeah, call. Yeah, to, so get to, get call to get them on campus, to get them on the phone, whatever. Now it's sexy because, you know, guys paved the way for us to get in contact. You know, last year, go down to the wire with Duke with Trayvon Duval. You know, and stuff like like that, and have us be involved with all the top kids right now. It's so it's um, it's a journey, man. Yeah. You know, it's it's part of it. And with us, is 
like, like we say all the time, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. And we understand that, and um, that's why we um, on a pace to be, you know, as good as we could be. Yeah, you guys uh, have a, a wonderful recruiting class currently. Mm -hmm. This this group of kids, how how are they right now? Over the it's good. You know, it's been it's been really good because we got a mix of young and older guys, mm -hmm. and older guys are taking the young guys under their wing and really showing them the ropes and how to work hard and what's expected. You know that you know they they're here. And before, like we didn't have that when we first got here. There wasn't no older guys. There was no one who's been in the program. We could teach them. Like, we had to build a culture over. Yeah. And, and now that we got guys in that, you know, our guys and the way we do things and we teach things, and now these guys are showing other guys how to do it, it's easier. And that's how all the, the good programs are good because they got older guys in the program to teach the young guys. And now having four seniors is great for us because they're not only good players, they're great kids, but they teach the young guys what's right, what's wrong. Right. So now we don't have to do it. Because they do it. And they also teach them the standards of the program. Like, you want to play here, this is what's important. And so it, it, it's a culture, man. Uh, besides the, the top talent factor that you guys look for, obviously, um, and that you guys are getting, what are some of the, in terms of personality, character, what kind of guys are you guys looking for in terms of that type of guy, mm -hmm. you know, off the court? Because that's also vital for it's very the culture. Important. It's very important. Well, what else we have a saying? It's not the best guy, it's the right guy. So right, some people want to recruit the best players possible. We want to recruit the right players, the players that fit what we're trying to do. You know, that's, that's going to come in and fit in into our culture. Yeah. You know, um, not trying to be the man and not trying to think you're better than everybody else and you walk around with this chip on your shoulder and that you car get the, you know. No, no, no. We want humble kids that come from good basketball programs, come from good families. Yeah want to be a very good basketball player because what we have to offer is different from anybody else. We understand who we are and where we are. Some people don't understand that. We understand that. We're not going to get the five-star recruit all the time. Right. We might have to get a three-star recruit and make them a five-star recruit. But we understand that. And we're cool with that because our thing is no one's going to outwork us. Like we, we might not be the best coaches in the world, but no one's going to outwork us. No one's going to work harder with you on your game and also work hard with you to become the best person you could become. Because it's more than just basketball with us. It's off the court, it's on the court. So we bring kids in here that want to have the best of both worlds. A great academics and great basketball. And then those are the kids that we target. Do you notice like some of the AAU coaches now want to come over to visit and... Uh, well, you know what, when you're winning set. and when you're doing things right, that's all that happens. And that's a good thing. Yeah. I remember when we couldn't get AAU coaches over here. It was tough. I, our first couple of years here, you know, we had to, you know, everybody wanted to see what you could do. You know, coming to an area like Seton Hall and New York and New Jersey, you know, Coach Willard wasn't from the area, which people didn't know he is because he's from Long Island. Mm -hmm. You know, people knew me, you know, at the time, and we had Chris Pompey who wasn't from the area at the time, and Coach McHale, who's from Jersey, but went to school in Kentucky. So people want to, you know, who's those guys over there? I, well, we, we know Shaheen. But we don't really know Coach Willard, and we don't really know Coach Pompey, and we don't really know Dan that much. So who, who are those guys, and why should we send our guys to those guys? And that. So it, it was tough at first. It was really, really tough. But we worked. You know, we fought. You know, we scratched. We clawed. We, a lot of we, recruiting battles. We knew once we get it rolling, it was going to be good because, like I said, we work hard. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying that other programs don't work hard, but that's who we are. So everybody had their thing of their program. Our program is our hard work and our individual instruction. That's who we are. And that's what we build our head on. This is a beautiful campus. This is the first time I've ever been here. I've been you know what, Seton Hall is a, and, and, and most people would just come to the gym, they have no idea how beautiful the campus is around us. And you go down to South Orange, you know, downtown, it's an unbelievable, unbelievable campus, unbelievable um, community. And that's what I found love with when I came on my visit. So were you, yes. Talk to me about that when you were 1996 when you came in um, versus today. It's uh, what 20. It's a big difference, you know. We yeah. got our major facilities is upgraded. It's unbelievable. You know, we didn't have these offices up here. What What was you know, the office like back in the days? Well, when we, we were, were downstairs players? in women's basketball. When women's basketball is right now, uh -huh. that's where the men's basketball office was. And then they built this my junior year. Tommy Hemker came in with the coach and coming from Duke, you know, he made them understand, you know, what you need to do to get started. And you know, since We've been here, 
with the new athletic director, Pat Lyons, we built everything over. New locker room, new um, weight room, new training facilities, um, the back gym. Like, I mean, this is, we didn't have any of this stuff when I, when I was here. So this is a major, major, major thing. So they're upgrade. living in Disneyland, these kids here. Oh, oh and man. And you are living oh, in. Man. But it starts like that, everywhere. Yeah. They got to start somewhere. Right. You know what I mean? And, um, yeah, so they benefit. They benefited from you know the past you know teams like the Terry DeHairs and the Jerry Walkers and the John Morris you know those guys that you know that won in 1989 took the team to the you know Final Four and Terry DeHair those guys you know building the, the the culture of the program step by step and building it and you know PJ Carlissimo and Mark Bryant like those guys started everything and then a guy like myself kind of like helped came it. on carry and over. then Andre Eddie those guys Marcus they helped it and then everybody had their they their their time, you know. Jamie Ozell, his class helped it, you know. Eugene Harvey, like this, Brian Lane, like everybody played the part in building this thing to where it is today. And now the guy that's here now got to keep building it for the future. The neighborhoods has the neighborhoods changed or stayed the same? It's no, always... got, no. The, so, if you know, South Orange is one of the most beautiful neighborhoods in the country. It's unbelievable. You know, they have built up, you know, downtown South Orange. Yeah, I saw that. You know, the I train station over. is unbelievable. It's nice. Um, Restaurants down there is great, you know. It's a little college town, so it's 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 big time now. Like I said, you no, know, you know the facilities that that we have right now, we could compete with a lot of big time schools. Like we didn't have that when I was here, and that wasn't important. I didn't care about facilities when I I was in college. I didn't. Really, that wasn't my thing. I didn't care. I didn't come to college and say, oh, I need a weight room or this, that, and this. Now kids love that stuff. Yeah. You know, you need to have that stuff. You know, um, the Prudential Center is big time where we play at. You know, I played in the Meadowlands. Not that it's not good, but it was far oh, away. Oh, I know like where that. the metal. We yeah, don't have to talk exactly. about the metal. So you know, everything is different, man. And just yeah. it's a different animal right now. Kids, the things that kids love, now I didn't care about what the kids in my era didn't care about. So you know, it is what it is. Um, when the parents get here, when they come on visits, mm -hmm. these players, they're not maybe not from Jersey, mm -hmm. other parts, a little further away. What what are they? They can't believe how beautiful the campus is. Because they have a different image of it. People might, people would tell them stuff at the school that they don't know too much about it. Oh, it's, it's in Newark or it's close to here. They have no idea how beautiful the school is. So when, when they get here, they go, oh my goodness, this campus is unbelievable. It's beautiful. It's always clean. It's nice. It's got great, it's, you know, it's the buildings, the, 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 the this, the that. Like, so they are like, they can't believe how nice it is. You know, so it's, um, you know, we have a lot to offer, man. It's, it's a good time to be a pirate, man. It's a good time. Um, and I'm sure you're working on it, and I'm sure some of these parents and kids will see the video and hear about it and uh, be very enlightened. Uh, in terms of this season going forward, yep. uh, what do you? what's the expectation and Coach Wheeler, yourself, and the rest of the staff expect? We don't really put expectations, man. The one thing we do, the one thing we say is, you could guarantee, we, could, we could guarantee that we're going to go out there and compete for 40 minutes. We're going to go out there and give it our all. We're gonna make our our community our community proud and our university proud, and you're gonna make sure that everybody on our team is playing for the name on now on the front of the jersey. I mean, not not the name on the back of the jersey, but the name on the front of the jersey. So, when our guys go out there, they playing for each other. They are playing for Seton Hall. Nobody's out there playing for their individual self. And you know, most schools you really can't say that. A lot of kids is playing to get their stats and get their numbers. Well, us all of our guys is playing for the name on the front of the jersey, and that's Seton Hall. So. That would I could guarantee you. Our guys will go out there and compete and play at a high level and, and play the right way and, you know, have fun and, and win games. Have you noticed, like, the change in Prudential in terms of the fan base? Well, you know, since we first came in and now, absolutely. And, but that comes with we're winning. Yeah. You know, it comes with winning. It comes with, you know, the student body has been unbelievable since we've been here. Unbelievable student body. I would say one of the best in the country. I was doing the body section. How do you how do you guys um would they bust them out to Prudential? Yeah, yeah right? they bust them down to Prudential. You know, the train station is right here. You take the train right from South Orange right okay, to, to Broad Street. There. It's right there. Yeah, like Broad Street, right there, North Penn Station, and just walk up one block. So it's um, you know, it's it's, it's easier access than it was to get to the Meadowlands. So it's it's been good, man. You know, and um, you gotta continue it, and you know, when you win, everything helps, and that's gonna be helping us because we've been winning. So it's it's helped bring a, a better crowd and a bigger crowd. What what are some of um, the things that you emphasize on teaching these guys? Well, I just want to emphasize on doing things the right way. 
you know, and, and, and being a gym rat and, and wanting to be good and learning how to be good. Because everybody want to work, but they don't know how to work. So, so how, why, what is the how? Well, you know, like, I watch a lot of film with our guys because I could tell you something, but when you see it yourself, you see, you see, you see yourself doing it, like, oh, wow, coach is right. And the good thing about me, I'm still young, I could get out there and show them. So, like, most kids don't really, like, I could say something, but when I got there and show them, they're like, oh, and they appreciate it more, and they, they respect it more. Like, oh, coach know what he's talking about, and he still could do it. Yeah. So I think, you know, me being, you know, younger, young, <laughs> I'm getting off there, but, but, but me being young and still be able to get, get on the court and show them stuff and, um, you know, break down film and then watch the film. And, you know, I was doing a lot of individual instruction, and players see themselves getting better and see it working and see it's working and then it makes it makes things easier and they're more in they, tune to what to what I'm saying now or what we're teaching because they see the, the results from it so now you see a kid like Miles Powell who comes in you know at, at 240 and we, yeah. preach, and we preach to him like listen you gotta do this every day do this every day and by the time he got to summer school in June by the time this, this year last year okay as a freshman uh -huh. in June and then September he's down 42 pounds and it's because of everything that we was preaching to him, teaching him, showing him, telling him, and now he's he seen it. He was 240. 240. 240 yeah. entering Seton Hall. Yes. He was pretty much a tight end, yeah. playing football. Pretty much, yeah. And yeah. now, you know, and, and he had a wonderful freshman year. And you now we expect big things from his sophomore year. But, you know, that's just one example. You know, you bring a kid in like Isaiah Whitehead, who people told us that couldn't play point guard. You know, we made him a point guard, now he's a point guard in the NBA. So, you know, so those things are the things that we hold our head on, right? It's all about working hard and, and, and trying to be the best you can be. And, and, and I, have, I have a saying, you can't listen and talk at the same time. So if, if I'm trying to tell you something and you're trying to talk over me, then you're not listening to me. So if you listen to what I say, understand what I say, process it, then you're going to be, then you're going to be successful. Because I'm trying to give you the answer to the test. But if you got all the answers already, then how can I help you? If you know everything, I, c I can't help you. Coach Willie can't help you. So you, you can't talk and listen at the same time. You got to listen. And that's why I'm explaining to Jordan right now. Right now, you got to do more listening than talking. You know, you're a good player. And you're going to be a very good player for us. But right now, as a freshman, all freshmen, got to sit down and just listen. I don't need you to talk right now. I need you to listen. What are some of the, you know, all these kids have dreams and aspirations of becoming pro. NBA, 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 NBA. It's not even at Seton Hall. We're talking about every everywhere. school. Everywhere. 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 How do you subdue the hype, that noise? Because that's nonsense. That's not, it's not, a culture. Yeah. It's a culture. So that's what I'm saying. Like, you have to build a culture at, at the school, and you got to have the guys in the program sell the culture to the other guys. Like, at Duke. It's a culture. Like, they have older guys there, so when these young guys with the big hype coming in, you know, the coaches ain't got to break them down. The players break them down. They show them, no, 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 this is how it's done here. It ain't about what you want to do. It's what we want to do, and that's what we got, and that's what we're doing, and that's what we're striving for, to continue to build the culture. And the culture is, it's not about you. That's our culture. It's, you know, it's not about you. It's about us. So if you ain't trying to do what we're trying to do, then it's not going to work. And the players sell that. Because that's what we installed in them from day one. And the older guys now, the Kadeem, the Desi, the Angel, the Ish, those guys are preaching that to the younger guys because that's what we preach to them. So now, once again, because we preach it to them and they see results. They're going to see that they're going to have a career afterwards. They think because they see results. It's all about results, the kid. It's all about results. Is there, is there something that you guys would say also like to, for them to just not focus on this right now? Because that's, you know, these pro jobs are down the road. Mm -hmm. You have to always perform on the court. Is there something you guys well, well, like to kind of align? You know, well, well, with us is we have a saying. If you mess up off the court, you're going to mess up on the court. So it's a balance. It's a balance. You have to do, if you're not 15 minutes early to class, then you're late. If you're not an hour early to practice, then you're late. So it's a balance. We, we, that, that's, what, that's our thing, it's a balance. You got to be good off the court, then be good on the court. If you're not good off the court, then you're not going to be good on the court. And, and it's, it's been proven time and time and time and time again. And that's what our thing is. So 
when we saying about academics and how important academics is, and that's why we got a 3.2 GPA, the highest in the Big East. Right now? Yeah. The highest. And it's been, one of the, it's been one of the highest in the country since we've been here, the last four or five years, and because we put, because it, it's important to us. It's, a, it's not just about basketball. It's more than basketball here with us. So when we bring these kids here, we make them understand that. And that's the balance. If you're doing good off the court, you're going to do good on the court. So if you put that same time and effort studying for an exam, and you put that same time and effort on the court, it's going to work out. And, and these guys are now? Buying into it. And guess what? It's been working. And that's why the last three or four years, 3.2, 3, 3.3, you know, we, we had five guys, six guys on our team this year that made all academic Big East teams. Wow. You know, and that's, and that's pretty impressive. You know what I mean? And that's just, you know, who we are. You know, it's more than basketball. That's our thing. It's more than basketball. Was there was there a few guys in the all Big East team academics? A few Six years. No, but before you guys came in. Before we got the job here. Mm -hmm. Now that's something you gotta look up. I don't want to say no. Yeah, there are some. I'm sure. Now I don't want to say no, but I'm guarantee you it wasn't as as consistent as it is right now. Okay. Every year we have three or four guys on it. Wow. You know, wow. so and, and this is our logo. You know, so you look at it, one heart, one beat. Yeah. And it, you know, it's self-explanatory. One heart, one beat. Everything relies on us together as a team. It's one heart, one beat. Everybody's heart is into it. Everybody's into it together. This is who we are. This is what we, we do. And, you know, the guys born into it and the young guys are buying into it because the older guys buy into it. So if, if my seniors, you know, Desi, Kadeem, Ish, Angel are buying into it, then guess what? Miles Powell, Miles Kell, Jordan, Sandra, those guys won't buy into it. And that's just part of the culture. Wow, this is, it, it, it's been amazing to see, like, uh, you know, upward steady stream for you guys yeah, going yeah. forward. We still, um, we still got a long way to go. Long, well, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. and it never stops, yeah. it never stops, because, you know, once you get to the top of the top of the steps, you know, there's always yeah, someone yeah, else yeah. coming after absolutely, you, absolutely. you know. You know, it, it starts with Kevin Willard. Kevin Willard did, have done an unbelievable job of setting the tone. It, it always starts with the leader, and he's our leader. He's done an unbelievable job of setting the tone, and, I, and I'm right there next to him, I'm under him, and I'm setting the tone, and then, you know, it's, it's a trickle-down effect. It goes from the top, everybody has a role to play. All our coaches, all our players, we all have a role to play. And if everybody's on the same page, then, you know. Boom. Exactly. Um, you guys recruit mu a lot here, Garden yeah. State. I have you to, know. It's rich. It, yes, it's rich, yes, you know? yes. Yeah. And that's, why, that's why a lot of people from all over the country try to come in and steal our players, man. <laughs> <laughs> but gardens keep, keep the players home. <laughs> keep the good players home. All those schools, stay go recruit in your, in your own state. <laughs> uh, and they're also eligible. Yeah. Most of the gardens. Well, you know what? I think the coaches in the New York area, we do Jersey, New York area, tries to area, do a good job on and off the court. They do a great job. I mean, the basketball tradition is rich in this area, and um, it's been really good. You know, the last eight to ten years, man. So, you know, uh, we you know if you get a kid from a program in the Garden State area, New York, New Jersey, they're going to be ready to play college basketball when they come in. And that's why we try to keep as much kids home as possible. And that's our, and that's our number one goal. Yeah. We want to recruit and we want to get the best guys out of our area. Yeah. And and the state's two big powerhouses, Seton Hall and Rutgers is slowly creeping up as well. Different conference, but, you know, we saw in the game, uh, last season, you guys are going to New Brunswick this year yep, to play, yep, right? Yep, yep, yep. But the crowd at uh, Prudential was crazy. Yeah, yeah, you know what? It's good. You know, it's, you it's know, healthy for you know, the, the the new coaching staff over here did an unbelievable job this year. They got a great coaching staff, you know, from top to bottom. Um, you know, I, I can see them doing great things. You know, it's great. It's great for basketball in the state when both schools are, are doing really well. You know, and, and, and St. John's as well. You know, it's it's good for basketball in the area because. It make more local kids want to stay home, and you know that's the, and that's what I'm sure all the schools trying to do get all the local kids to stay home. And if all the programs are doing well, then it, it helps. Everybody wins. It helps. Yeah, it helps. Uh, one last thing: we talked a lot. We've gone over some really great stuff. Most memorable game or opponent? You know, hey, look, people ask me all the time. It, it, it's tough for me. Man. I play a lot of basketball. Man. I play a lot of basketball against a lot of. Big time people, big big time players. Um, I don't really have one moment because I had a lot of great moments, some good moments, some bad moments. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would say 
um, in 2000, hitting the game winning layup in the NCAA tournament to help us advance to the Sweet 16 was a great moment for me. Huge. Yeah, so I would say that's one of the, you know one of my moments. I would say, you know, um, you know, getting MVP in the McDonald's All American game. I would say, you know, having a chance to play against the best players. I would say, you know, one time I was at ABCD camp and. You know, we had Stephon Barberry, Allen Iverson, Shamgar Wells. You know, every every game Everybody. I play, I play against a, a good guard, and and that's how it was back then. You know, and and that's why you know basketball back then is unbelievable because, and not that it's not right now. I'm not knocking the basketball right now. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying you know, back then you had you had to bring your A game every single day. I had to make sure I bring my hard hat. I had to make sure I laced up my Timberlands and went to war. Every single day, and that's how it was, and and, and, that's, and that's what's good about it. Wow, I mean, back in the days, some amazing games, no video footage, obviously. At that time, right? it was yeah. like it's now it's like so much video footage. Too much. It's a too little much. too much. Too much, and I think you know sometimes that's um, and I, and it's funny. I was talking with somebody earlier today. I said, mm -hmm. AAU is needed. Yes, it's needed. Because yes, it, because they give a platform to some kids that don't get a chance to get seen during a regular year. But sometimes it's also not, not that good. Yeah. You no, know, but um, it's needed. It's definitely needed, and and, and I love it. You know, um, you know, we get a chance to go out and, and evaluate kids and see them, and you know, get a chance to meet people and stuff like that. So, but it's a lot right now. It's a lot. Like kids are playing so much, and so now sometimes when they get to college, they they kind of worn down. You know, you can do yeah, that. Yeah, hear about like, that. You got kids, you know, playing all year round. So now when they, they get to college, that's why there's so many injuries. But like I said, I don't want to knock it because AU is needed. Um, I love it. Kids need it. You know, kids getting a, a lot of kids get a lot of scholarship offers or getting a lot of scholarships because of AU. And so, relationships too. And, and that's because it's needed. It's needed. Yeah. So it's needed. It's definitely needed. So I don't want to say uh, people saying, "Well, Coach Holloway, no, no, no." AU is definitely needed. It's just a, it's a lot right now. The game of basketball. What has it taught you? Life. It In taught me life. It taught me. Because I, I, I want to hear, yeah, what is that? Well, it took me the good and bad because there's it, a lot that goes in the game of basketball. You know, you look at this, you look at this, you know, there's this thing right here. And I, and yeah. I tell our kids all the time, you know, a lot of people take this thing for granted. Right, it's just the ball and the hoop. And I don't because this took me around the world. You know, this made me make a lot of friends and friendships and relationships that I never would have if I never would play this game. So I don't take this game for, I don't take this for granted. You know, this is my best friend. It has, it's been my best friend since eighth grade. You know, and I'm, I'm sorry, it's in fifth grade, and I'm very grateful of it. And I'm and so when, when there are kids out there that's not working as hard, I get really upset because they think that it's supposed to be a certain way. Well, I'm supposed to get a scholarship because I'm playing basketball. Right. Well, I'm supposed to, you know, go to this place or this high school because no, 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 like it's a purpose to play this game. You know, it's, 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 when you ask me what I, what I learned, I learned discipline. I learned determination. I learned the, the three Ds. I live my life by the three Ds. Discipline, determination, and, and desire. So I learned all that playing basketball. Wow. So that's why I say it's life. And, and it's carried you here to one of the penthouse. That's what I'm saying. So that's why, so when I, when I say I learned, you know, life lessons, I live my life out of the three Ds. And, you know, when you got the, the, the discipline, the determination, and the desire, you can do anything you, you can do anything you want. It's more, and I try to tell some of these younger guys too. It's more than just putting a ball in the hoop, getting a scholarship. Putting a ball in the hoop. That's that's not the easy part. Yeah. The hard part is, is you know, is, is coming to a school like Seton Hall. You have to sit in that classroom and learning that work, and then coming back, going away lifting. Practice, study hall, eating, social life. You know, it, it's that's work. It's, it's a job. It is a job, and that's why I tell these kids: like, you get some. It depends on what school you go to. See, so, you know, you know, it's almost fifty-five, sixty thousand dollars. We paying you fifty-five, sixty thousand dollars a year. Going for free scholarships to work. Yeah. So a kid like I want to get paid is that you? You're getting paid. You getting a sixty thousand dollars scholarship. We paying you sixty thousand dollars a year to go to work. And what your job is, is to be the best person you could be, be a good student, and work as hard as you can on the basketball court. 
that's a pretty good job. Yeah. You know what I mean? How can you not like that? Yeah. Think about that. You're getting paid $60,000 a year to somebody you're supposed to love. Yeah. Right? You're supposed to love, love the game, right? Yeah. So further yourself, better yourself. In life. In life. Play basketball and have a chance to make a lot of money. After college. No matter if it's in the corporate world or it's in the athletic world. Yeah. Think about that. I wish I wish I had the skills and all the talent like you, and then I wouldn't have the student loans <laughs> that's burdened by uh, my school. Well, you know what? My daughter got some student loans, so I get it. I understand it. Um, I'm not one of those kids that was, you know, fortunate to, you know, grow up, you know, whatever. I had to fight for everything I got, so I get it. I understand yeah. it, you know, and you know, so it's part of it. Shaheen, thank you, man. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. Yep.